Hey guys, um, if you've been on this channel, you know the drill. If not, um, welcome to this channel. And today I'm going to be reading pages 24 and 25. <clears throat> Sorry. Just... Okay. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zor. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zor. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah, from the Lord out of the heavens. So he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of those cities, and what grew on the ground. But his wife looked back behind him, and she became a pillar of salt. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. Then he looked toward Sodom and Gomorrah, and toward all the land of the plain. And he saw, and behold, the smoke of the land which went up like the smoke of a furnace. And it came to pass, when God destroyed the cities of the plain, that God remembered Abraham, and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow, when he overthrew the cities in which Lot had dwelt. The Descendants of Lot Then Lot went up out of Zor, and dwelt in the mountains, and his two daughters were with him, for he was afraid to dwell in Zor. And he and his two daughters dwelt in a cave, now the firstborn said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man on earth to come into us as the custom of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drink wine, and we will lie with him, so that, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and lay with her father, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. It happened on the next day that the firstborn said to the younger, Indeed, I lay with my father last night. Let us make him drink wine tonight also, and you go in and lie with him, that we may preserve the lineage of our father. Then they made their father drink wine that night also, and the younger arose and lay with him, and she did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Thus both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. The firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. And the younger, she also bore a son and called and called his name Ben Ami. He is the father of the people of Ammon to this day. Abraham and Abimelech. And Abraham journeyed from there to the south, and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur, and stayed in Gerar. Now Abraham said of Sarah to his wife, Sarah his wife, she is my sister, and Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night, and said to him, Indeed you are a dead man because of the woman whom you, whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech Am Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? Did he not say to me, she is my sister? And she, even herself, said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, I have done this. And God said to him in a dream, yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart, for I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Now, therefore, restore the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. What's it mean? A prophet is a person who receives messages from God and then passes them along to others. Many of the prophet's messages involve teaching and, or correcting people, and some of them had to do with the future. Genesis 27. So Abimelech rose early in the morning, called all his servants, and told all these things in their hearing. And the men were very much afraid. And Abimelech said, and Abimelech called Abram and said to him, What have you done to us? How have I offended you that you have brought on me and my kingdom a great me and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds to me that ought not to be done. Then Abimelech said to Abraham. What did you have in view that you have done this thing? And Abraham said, 
because I thought surely the fear of God is not in this place, and they will kill me on account of my wife. But indeed she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And it, is, and it came to pass, when God caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said to her, This is your kindness that you should do for me. In every place, wherever we go, save me, he is my brother. Then Abimelech took sheep, oxen, and male and female servants, and gave them to Abraham. And he restored Sarah his wife to him. And Abimelech said, See, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. Then to Sarah he said, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody. Thus she was rebuked. Rebuked? I don't know that word. Um, so Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants. Then they bore children, for the Lord had closed up all, all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Isaac is born. And the Lord visited Sarah as he, sa had, as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah had convinced had conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Now Abraham was one hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah, had, Sarah said, God has made me laugh, and all who hear will laugh with me. She also said, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? For I have borne him a son in his old age. Hagar and Ishmael depart. So the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar and, Egypt, and the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, scoffing. Therefore she said to Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, namely with Isaac. And the matter was very displeasing in Abraham's sight because of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac your seed shall be called. Yet I will also make a nation of the son of the bondwoman, because he is your seed. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm just... My mouth is like... I don't know what's wrong with it right now. And so when I look down too much, it does this. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water. And putting it on her shoulder, he gave it and the boy to Hagar, and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered into the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot. For she said to herself, Let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite, of, opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad who, of the lad where he is. Arise, lift the lad and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad. And he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. Archer, He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. A covenant with Abimelech. And it came to pass at the time that Abimelech and Phichol, the commander of his army, spoke with Abraham, saying, God is with you in all that you do. Now therefore swear to me by God that you will not deal falsely with me with my offspring or with my posterity, but that according to the kindness I have done 
to you, you will do to me to the land in which you have dwelt. And Abraham said, I will swear. <clears throat> then Abraham rebuked Abimelech because of a well of water which Abimelech's servants had seized. And Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. You did not tell me, nor had I heard of it until today. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech. And the two of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven lambs of the flock by themselves. Then Abimelech asked Abraham, what is the meaning of these seven Ewe lambs, which you have set by themselves? And he said, You will take these seven Ewe lambs from my hand, that they may be my witness that I have dug this well. Therefore he called that place Beersheba, because the two of them swore an oath there. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba. Oh no, that's the end of the sentence. I was thinking that it was in comma. Nope. Okay, well then that's the end. Um, that was pages 24 and 25. See y'all next week.